In this video, you need to configure static NAT. In this topology, we have multiple internal servers that need to be accessed from the outside. In other words, this PC, outside PC1, needs to be able to access the HTTP server and FTP server in the internal network. This router is our internet facing router. This interface gigabit 001 is connected to the internet and this interface is connected to a switch on the inside of our network. Here are the router details that you need to configure and then you need to configure static NAT so that the PC on the outside can access the internal HTTP and FTP servers. To see the internal IP addresses of these servers, click on the server in Packet Tracer and go to Config, Interface, and you'll be able to see the IP addresses of the internal servers. So one has an IP address of 10.1.1.100, the other one 10.1.1.101. However, those are not internet routable addresses. They are RFC 1918 addresses, in other words, private IP addresses. So to allow this PC on the outside to access the servers, you are going to have to configure static NAT on the router and use public IP addresses. The HTTP server has been allocated IP address 8.8.8.200 and the FTP server 8.8.8.201. For the HTTP or web server, you're going to configure it to only NAT of the required port number. So when a user here opens up a web browser and connects to myhttp.com, the DNS server will resolve the IP address 28.8.8.200 and the router needs to do a static NAT translation to translate that to the internal server IP address. The same is true for FTP but in this example, you're going to do a full NAT translation using the domain name myftp.com. So when the PC opens up an FTP client and connects to myftp.com, the DNS server will resolve myftp.com to 8.8.8.201. The router needs to be configured with that IP address to NAT the IP address to the internal server. Now, as always, don't just configure, verify, and make sure that things are working the way that you think they're working. Routers and other network devices do what you tell them to do, not what you think they should do. So verify that you've configured the devices in the way that you think you have. So verify that both the inside PC, this PC here, and outside PC, this one here, can access the internal servers. Because we don't have an internal DNS server in our network, you need to configure the inside host to use internal IP addresses to connect to the servers. So in other words, open up a web browser and connect to the IP address of the HTTP server using its internal or inside IP address. On the outside, Verify that the outside host can connect to these servers using DNS names. So there you go. Can you complete this lab? Can you configure the lab and verify that it's working as it should? Download the attached packet tracer file and see if you can complete the lab yourself. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to do this. But as always, try it yourself first. These kind of labs are great for verifying that you know the CCNA topics and that you are ready for the CCNA exam.